Hello and welcome. My name is Trey Brimmer. I'm with Mitel, and today I'm going to go over the Mitel 6920 IP phone. We're going to go over its uh, features and tools that are available on the phone. This is a generic overview. So your phone may vary a little here or there or some of the features and tools. But as I go through the phone, I'll kind of point out things that may be a little different. A lot of the phone is uh, ready to go exactly like I described. There are some areas where you can add buttons or that sort of thing that may look a little different for you. But we'll kind of discuss it as we go along. Here's a uh, picture of the 6920 IP phone. They'll give you the basic lay of the land. The top part uh, has your display and uh, on the left hand side staggered keys that uh, will relate to buttons that we have programmed for you on the phone. Uh, the bottom uh, four keys that you see just below the display have to do with a dynamic area that changes uh, depending on where you're at on a call. When a call comes in, it'll allow you to answer. When you answer, it allows you to do transfer and conference. So this is a soft key area that changes depending on the conditions of the phone. Uh, next to that, over towards the right, you have a circle, a little silver circle. That's your navigation key. That's going to allow you to navigate through different displays. Uh, there are sections where you'll use this navigation key. And as we go through the phone, I'm going to point those areas out so you know when that comes into play. Um, then looking below in that gray area, you'll see first uh, there are buttons on either side of the keypad, the standard keypad, and they have little symbols on them. And I'm going to explain what each of those symbols means and uh, how to use each of those functions. So we're going to go from the top to the bottom, just figure this whole phone out together. Um, we're going to start off first with this navigation key, just to give you how this works. Uh, this is what the, navig the navigation key looks like. Uh, the center of it is select and the outside is left, right, up or down. So that's how you'll be able to navigate using that ring to the outside. The center is if you land on something, say you want to, you're in call history, you scroll over to a name, you can hit the center of the key and dial it. So it gives you a quick way to dial or select something. So the first thing I want to talk about is hot desking. Now this is a feature and it's a feature that is available, but it may be a feature you've opted out of for some reason. You didn't see the need for it. What hot desking is, is the ability to take over a phone. What I could do is go to a conference room if I need to spread out, or if I, you are interconnected with multiple offices, I would be in a different office for the day. I could hot desk into a phone and basically it takes it over and makes it my own phone for all intent tents and purposes. It'll have my extension number on there. It'll have all the buttons I've programmed on there. Anyone who dials my direct dial number, if you have one, will ring to this phone. Uh, my voicemail I can access from this phone. It'll work just like my desk phone, but it gives me the, the ability to basically be mobile. I can move around. If I had an office where people were sharing desks at different times, I could give them each an extension number. They could log into their extension number uh, and be take over that phone for the time that they're, they're there. So uh, it's sort of like call center login almost if you're familiar with that. Uh, but this gives you the ability to have that feature. And it's a feature that even though you have, you don't necessarily have to ever use. You could be logged in all the time. I work from a home office, so I never log out of my phone. But if I were to go to the corporate office or one of our other uh, branches or offices somewhere, I could go into a conference room or into an empty desk and log into my phone and I'd answer my phones just like I was sitting in my home office. So it's a very nice function and a very very nice tool. Not everyone needs it. They don't see the need. Uh, but if you do see the need, this may be a, a function you'd like. But either way, it does take some education to know how to use it. So if you aren't going to be using hot desk uh, desking, you can disregard this. But otherwise, let's kind of show you how you will hot desk into your phone. Um, so this is what a phone looks like when no one is hot desked into it. Now, you have two options. Number one is maybe the phones are not logged in at all and you log into it. And the other one is you take over someone's phone. So for the day, I'm going to log into your phone and take it over because I uh, am in for the day and you're out. Uh, this is the uh, this is where no one's logged in. This is what the phone will look like. And the reason why I show you this is because uh, there's some telltale signs that you are logged out. There has been occasions in my past where a reset of my um, server has caused the phone to be in a, this position where I have to log back into it or an upgrade to the system has done it. So it's good to know if you have the feature how to do it, even if you're not using the feature often or at all. 
Um, this is what the phone would look like if it's in a locked position. It has the extension number up top, but it has a pound in it to indicate that something's not quite right. Also, it says locked on the display, and now and on the bottom, it's offering you hot desk, which means it's wanting you to log in because you're currently not logged in. Um, if you were logged in, it would say logged out rather than hot desk because it gives you the ability to log out somebody and then log yourself into it when you're logged in. I'll kind of point that out. But the only thing the phone will do when it's in this position is to dial 911 or the operator. Uh, you won't be able to dial an outside number, nor will you be able to receive inbound call traffic. So we better get your lot, uh, hot desk in. The way we'll do that is you'll press the hot desk button uh, at the very bottom corresponding with that soft key area. Uh, once I press that, I'll enter my extension number and then hit enter. Once I do that, it's going to offer me, it's going to ask me for a pin. The pin by default, the way we set it up generally, or I set it up, is the pin would be the same as the extension if you haven't set up your voicemail. So the voicemail and your pin for your hot desks are linked. Once you set up your voicemail box, whatever pin you use there when you're going through the tutorial to set it up is what you'll also use for your hot desk pin. So initially, the first time I go into my phone, if this is a brand new system to you, I'll use my extension number again, unless someone tells you otherwise. Sometimes they'll use 1111 or something like that, but pretty much across the board, I've always seen the extension number used. Um, once they put it, you put in the extension number and hit enter, or if you have been in and set up your voicemail previously, put in your voicemail pin number, uh, it'll come to your display. Now, the display I'm showing you is a generic display that we use. If you didn't have any special needs for special buttons, then this is what you would probably be seeing from us. Um, it varies depending on who's installing the phone uh, or your specific needs. Maybe you say, I don't want D&D &D, or I want to have the ability to twin my phone, so you need some buttons for that. So there could be some other functionality here that you would have, but this is just a generic look at a generic phone. So let's kind of talk about what's going on on the display. We'll start at the very top and kind of work our way down. So at the very top, you have your extension number without the pound now, because we're currently logged in and ready to roll. Um, across to the right, you'll see little symbols. These symbols are just indicating things like you're currently present. That's what the little fellow there means. Uh, you're logged in and ready to go. The little ricochet with the four is just indicating that you missed four calls. And then the little boxes that are green are indicating uh, that you are on the network and everything's good, clean and green, ready to roll. Other symbols can show up during different times. Things like uh, a little envelope shows up when you have voicemail. Um, it also blinks a light on the phone, uh, at the very top of the phone, you'll see. Um, and then like when we're in Do Not Disturb, which I'll show you, you get a little symbol for Do Not Disturb up there. So that's an area that shows you just what's going on with the phone and in kind of symbol format. Um, going down the left-hand side, you'll see my phone. Now, regardless of who installs your phones or if it's me or somebody else, you're going to see the my phone there. Uh, always in that spot because that is fixed. We can't move it around. You, maybe you like that to be at the bottom. It can't be. It has to be where it sits. That's line one. My phone just means line one. And you can have phones with just the line one. As a matter of fact, if you are a call center person and using ACD, which is a w way of routing calls to you, uh, you may only have one line uh, that will be for your, for your inbound calls because you can only handle one ACD call at a time. Uh, generally, the general user, we like to do multi-keys, which would give you two lines. Uh, a third call, if you were on both of those lines, would go straight to voicemail. So for every line that you have, it gives you a pathway to your phone uh, to ring and show you caller ID and all that stuff. So most people just deal with two. If I'm on a call and I have a call on hold, I probably am not going to answer the third call. So as a courtesy, it'll go straight to voicemail and I, I can check it from there. Um, if you do desire to have more keys, you just let whoever's programming know and they can do you know, three call keys at a time if you prefer. Generally, if someone says whatever you, you uh, recommend, we do two call keys. Um, so with that being said, you have your line one, which says my phone on it, your line two. When calls come in, where it says my phone now will be replaced with caller identification phone number. Uh, line two is the same way. It says line two now, but the phone number will replace that when if you have a second call coming in. 
Uh, the next key down is your Do Not Disturb, our D&D key. Uh, it's basically you press the staggered key next to that um, where it says D&D, &D, and that turns it on and off. So it's a toggle. It just turns it on and off when it's on. It'll look like this. It'll kind of highlight and go from that gray to a red. And it also shows you the symbol up in, your, up, uh, up in that tray up top. Um, you press it again, it turns it off. Okay. Um, when the remaining keys, if you see any blanks in there, so in this example, there's three keys that are available. Those could be for a speed call. It could be for a uh, call that um, for somebody internally that you call a lot or an outside number that you want in there. The way you program that is a lot like you would program your stereo at home. You just hold the button down uh, for three or uh, four seconds and then it pops up a different display that allows you to program it. And I'll kind of show you that. Um, but I did also want to show you before we get to that, that in the center of this display near the top, you have your time and date that will show. Uh, that'll always be up there for you. And then there's some kind of some real estate there and it says redial and has the phone number that you last dialed. It could be an extension number or an outside number. You'll notice down in that um, dynamic area I was talking about with the four numbers, it offers you a redial. But when the call comes in, that goes away because you can't redial. So it's going to change depending on the conditions. Also in that gray area, it says log out. So if I was going to take over this phone, I could hit log out. It would then let me log in as myself onto this phone and take it over. Um, then when I log in here, it will log me out of my phone wherever that originally was. So when you log somebody out of something, all their calls go to voicemail. So at the end of the day, I'm currently logged into this phone, but my phone is in a different office. I could log out of me being here and then all my calls will go to voicemail until I log back in at my desk. So temporarily everything will go to voicemail, plus I'm not logged in anywhere, so that's the best place for it probably to go. If I'm part of a ring group or a hunt group, it just passes me by. It won't ring the phone if I'm not logged in anywhere, obviously, because I can't answer it. So that's what that looks like. Now, um, down below where it says redial, you'll see there's some dots. These could be up to three dots on a, on a uh, 6920 IP phone. Uh, in this example, I have two. This is pages. And using the navigation key, I can scroll over to the right-hand side and go to the second page. The second page, in this example, nothing's programmed. You could, during your design session, uh, or whoever's designing the phone, you know, put other buttons. Maybe IT needs to have a quick way to dial or a department or something. You could have keys already pre-programmed for everybody being the same. But um, in our example, we don't have anything on the second page. So it looks like this. Now to program one of those blank keys, I'm going to hold the staggered key next to the area. I want to program it. So let's just say we're doing the top. I'll just hold that down for three seconds. And it'll pop up with this programmable key. Uh, I can put in a label using the keys on the telephone. I can spell out a name. And then you can see below it says save, backspace, and ABC, and, and cancel. The ABC is where I can make it capital or lowercase. So I can spell out the name uh, that I want in there. And then I can use my navigation key and scroll down and put in the phone number. If it's an outside number, more than likely we use nine uh, for the outside number. You, you may have a special need. Maybe you're using eight. Uh, but mostly we use nine area code and phone number you'll put in there. And then I can mark it as private if it's a number I don't want other people to see. So that way, if it's private, uh, people can't look at my phone and see the phone number and write down my home phone number or my cell phone number or whatever it is. Uh, so I can decide if I want to make it private and then it'll only show the label. Um, also, if I make a mistake spelling it, I can backspace or I can cancel completely. But if I get everything in there, I'll hit save and that'll work out perfect. The other thing I can do is when I'm uh, highlighted on speed call, I can scroll down one to other features. Now, there's not going to be a lot of other features that you're going to want to access. The biggest one uh, on here is going to be call forward. Call forward is a feature. It allows you to forward your phone to another destination. And you would need a key to turn it on and off. So if you want to use the call forwarding feature, step one would be to create the button here for it so I could turn it on and off. And step two would be to go into the settings and set up the number that you want to forward to wherever it is you're going to go. 
Uh, do not disturb, you already have a button on here that represent it, represents it, but if you needed that button, you could create it. You don't have mobile line, you won't have that, and nor will you have an account code verification on these, uh, if you, unless you're a uh, ACD agent, and we would have probably already set that up for you. The one that says more just tells you the version of the phone, so what, what software it's running. So kind of don't have to worry about that too much. Okay, so that's how you program a, uh, a, uh, a button. Here's the incoming call or uh, incoming uh, intercom call. They're going to work the same way. Shows you the information. If it's internal, it'll show you the name and the uh, extension number of the person calling. If it's an outside number, it's going to show you the company name that's listed. You know, sometimes you don't see anything, depends on the company. And then you see the phone number. You can see what I was saying earlier is that where it said my phone now shows the caller identification uh, phone number. And this is a call as it's ringing in. So right now my only option is to answer. You notice that redial went away and log out. I can't do that right now because I got a call coming in. Uh, when I answer it, it's going to look like this. The timer will begin right under the time and date. Caller ID will stay with the line. So you still have that. But down below that dynamic area has changed. Now it's offering me things like transfer, add user, or end the call. I can end the call also by hanging up the phone, but if you're wearing a headset, you can hit that and, and release the call basically. So I'm on, this is assuming at this point that I'm on the physical call, I'm talking to somebody. And let's just say they wanna transfer. So let's talk about transferring a call. The way I'm gonna do that is I have a caller, ABC Company is calling, and I need to transfer it to you. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna press the transfer key. I'm gonna enter your extension number. And then I'm going to press the transfer key again to complete it. Now, if I press the transfer key and dial your extension and stay on the line, I'll hear your phone ring. You pick up. I can have a private conversation with you and then hit transfer to complete. So transferring the second time completes the transfer. So a call comes in, transfer, dial your extension. Hey, how you doing? Here's your call. Hit transfer again. I'm done with the call. I move on to the next one. So very easy to do a transfer. You'll notice also on here, when I hit transfer and dial your extension, it will offer me things like join calls, trade calls, or back to held. Now, what are those things? Let's talk about them really quick. Join calls is setting up a conference. So let's just see, say I intended to do a transfer to you, but when I hit transfer and dialed your extension and you got on the line, you said, hey, can you stay on the phone with me? I want you to talk to this guy too. I can say, sure, and I can join the calls together. So even though my original intention was to transfer it, I can turn it into a conference call if for some reason it becomes uh, uh, needed. So that way you always have that option until you hit the transfer again, you always have the option to join us all together. Trade calls is the ability to trade back and forth between the people I'm talking to. So an example of when that might come into play is I hit transfer and dial your extension, you pick up the phone, and I say, hey, someone with ABC Company is on the phone for you. And you say, well, I talked to about four people with them, ABC Company, can you tell me who it is? I can say, hold on. And without canceling the transfer and starting over, I can hit trade calls, go back to the original caller, say, hey, I'm sorry, uh, sir from ABC Company, what's your name? They give me the name, I can hit trade calls again, go back to the person I'm transferring it to and tell them the name and they say, go ahead, send them through and I hit transfer and it completes it. So that may or may, may or may not come into play for you, but that's a way you can bounce between the callers. It also works that way when you split off people on a conference call, you can hit trade calls to jump to each user and I'll show you how that works. Back to held is similar to trade calls, but in this case, it's canceling the transfer and going back to the original caller. So when I hit transfer and dial your extension and you pick up, and if you said, oh, I'm walking into a meeting, can you just tell them to call me back in uh, 20 minutes? I could say, sure, I could go back to held. That will cancel anything I had done up to that point as far as transfer, and I'd be back with the original caller. Then I could retransfer them to somebody else or tell them the information and hang up. So that's where you actually cancel the call out to the transfer out. Now it works a little different depending on what the scenario is, but on a transfer, that's what back to held does. If you're on a conference call and you have three or four people on a conference call, back to held would might be a situation you use just to get back to the original group of people you have. So it's like taking one step back. In this case, it's canceling because that's a step back 
Uh, but if we're on a conference with four people on it and I hit uh, back to held, I'm trying to add another person that will allow me to go back to the original conference call. I'll, I'll kind of explain it as we go through the conferencing. So that's transfer. Making a conference call is very similar. And you'll notice um, it has it takes you to the same second uh, kind of uh, menu on the bottom there. So in this case, here we are on a live call. <clears throat> now, this could be a call I have uh, been on for a while. It could be someone who's called me or I've called them. The main thing is me. I'm connected with one other person. Once I'm connected with one other person, it's going to offer me add user. Um, so rather than hit transfer, though, if I hit transfer, I could still do a conference call, right? But this kind of keeps your head straight. I'll hit add user if my intention is to set up a conference call. So I might call you. Hey, how are you doing? Hold on for the conference call. I hit add user. It um, immediately puts you on hold and I'll hear dial tone. I can dial someone else's extension. Then I could go ahead and once I have the other person's extension dialed in, I'll have the same thing I would have with a transfer call. I would hear the phone ring. We could privately have a conversation. And when I'm ready to connect us all together, I'm gonna hit join calls. Join calls will join all three of them together. You'll notice here I still have the trade call available. I can trade back to the original person. Hey, are you still there? Hold on, and I'm having a hard time connecting or something. Or back to help would cancel it. I'd go back to the original uh, caller. Once I join calls, I have a three-party conference. It'll say it on the display. I know I'm connected with everybody. Now I can add another person if I wanted to. Now on most people's conferencing, you can have up to seven people and yourself. So eight people total on a conference call. Uh, so uh, that's a real nice feature that you can do, and, but it's you reaching out to people. Um, so right now I'm on a third part, three-party conference. Uh, my options here are I can transfer this three-party conference to somebody else. Let's just say I'm setting it up for someone internally, and uh, I want to go ahead and transfer it to the final person it's going to go to, and they can be on the call. I can add another user, make it a four-party conference, and then add another one, five-party conference. I can split it. Splitting means it'll send everybody onto their own line because say someone's saying something they shouldn't. I can hit immediately split. It'll put everyone on their own little hold. And then what it'll say is trade call and I can hit trade call to jump between the user, the three users I have in this case and say, hey, shut up or hey, don't say that or whatever I'm gonna say. So that's what split is. And then the last thing is leave call. This is important if you have outside callers on the line. So if I it's me and four other people and they're all external and I need to get off the call, but I want them to stay on the line, I would hit leave call. If I just hang up, it hangs up on all the conference. And that's a safety feature because you don't want people just staying on a call using your lines and long distance or whatever else while you're off the call and not knowing what's going on. So you have to actually hit the button to allow an all external call now if one internal person out of the group is on the call you don't have to hit that you can just hang up and it'll still stay going so it's a little safety feature there so that's the conference best case scenario with the conference is to go ahead and um, just test it it will work exactly the same if you're dealing with outside people as if you're dealing with internal extensions and you can call some people internally and conference them all together just to get a feel for it so when that time comes up that you need to use it you have some confidence that you know what you're doing it's a good practice you can do it with the transfer too you know you have someone internally call you transfer dial the, someone else's extension hit transfer again and send that call over and make sure you feel very confident in your ability to do that transfer so it's just a good way to kind of learn how to do it okay or call people outside that you know you know call home and say hey i'm just testing this or whatever and do it all right so let's now talk about the bottom keys that that kind of are on either side of the dial pad uh, they're all a little cryptic we're going to start on the um uh, left hand side at the top and work our way down and then we'll go to the uh, right hand side and go through those but i do want to say there's a logical separation in these keys these left hand side are more tools or settings keys they don't have much to do with the call itself except to look somebody up to call them the other side is more call handling. The right-hand side is more call handling. We saw on the soft keys that it's offering you a transfer and a conference, but it didn't offer things. There weren't keys for things like hold or mute, and that's where you're gonna find them over to the right-hand side. So um, keep it in mind that there's kind of a logical uh, separation there that we've done for you. 
Let's start off with the first one. It's your contacts key. So this is where you can look up people both in the corporate directory. That's going to be anybody with a phone and a name will be in that directory unless hidden for some reason. And it'll be ones that will be, abil uh, will be available to you as personal speed dials. These are ones you're going to add in. When you initially go into these um, contacts page, uh, you're going to notice that um, the personal contacts have nobody in there nor do the corporate. And I'll kind of explain why. So personal contacts are gonna be ones you've added in. So you can see if you look at the gray area now, it says add new and I can add one in and type in a name, similar to how I was gonna set up one of those buttons. So this might be personal contacts, could be internal people or outside numbers that you like. Maybe it's people that you want to have quickly, uh, have quick access to their number, but you don't wanna use a button for them. I don't call them enough that they need to have a button, but I'd like to have them listed, the people I deal with the most in my organization. Um, it can also be outside numbers, okay? So personal are gonna be ones that you slide in there as you go along. Um, you have two ways of adding personal contacts. The first way is manually by hitting add new, and I can put in the phone name and number, and I can put in multiple numbers. I can put in their extension number and their cell number, and I can access those things. Um, the other way is when I'm in call history, which I'll show you, I can add to my contacts list, which would add it to my personal contacts list. So that way it does some of the work for me. It puts the number in already, and maybe the correct name. If not, you can go in and edit it and modify it, okay? So this is what that looks like. You're gonna use your navigation key to scroll over to the right to highlight somebody that you wanna call. Uh, here's an example of that. I've went over to Bertha there and um, you can see now I can dial her. It's on the soft key, I can delete. I can add a new contact if I wanted to. Um, or I can continue to scroll to the right and see more information. So in this case, uh, Bertha here does uh, it's showing her extension number. So if I hit the center of the, the key or if I hit dial, it's gonna call her extension. But let's just say I know she's out of the office and I wanna get her cell phone number. If I continue scrolling to the right, I'll see her contact list. It's not Bertha's unfortunately, but it's another person's. And then I can choose which number I wanna dial. So you can edit this and add more information in. So it, it works really well and it gives you a lot of uh, options for that. So now on this case, I have her extension number and her mobile number. Uh, that's available and I can edit this at this point. The other thing you're gonna have contacts wise is corporate contacts. Corporate contacts will be unseen when you highlight. So I'm gonna use my navigation key uh, and go down from personal to corporate. And when I look at it, you're gonna be confused. You're gonna say, where are all the people? They're not in there. Well, you have to put at least the first letter of the last name in. So I could put a B and it would search through the B. So if you're with a huge organization, you're gonna to wanna to put a few more letters in maybe than if you're with a small one, because a small one you can maybe B would be enough. I could then, once I put in a, a letter or a few letters, I can scroll to the right using my navigation key and then scroll down till I find the right person and then it'll offer me dial or I can hit the center of the volume key. You can see here while I'm searching, I can uh, backspace if I put in the wrong letter or I can reset it if I wanna start over or I can close it to get out of it. The next button down is your uh, call history. It separates out the call history very nicely. You have all. Uh, which will show you all the everyone inbound, outbound, missed anything. Or I can look at just my missed calls. I can look at my outgoing calls or my received calls. When I scroll over and highlight one of them, I can dial it or I can add them to contact. That would add it to my personal contacts. Or, or for whatever reason, it, you can delete it if you don't want the number seen. So it separates each one out and allows you to access them very quickly. Okay. Here's my voicemail key. Uh, you'll press this key and it'll talk to you. It'll ask you for your PIN. That's kind of what we're talking about with the hot desk. Now, if you don't have hot desk, you don't really have to worry about the pins matching and all that. But if you do, the first time you go into your voicemail, and the first time you press this key at your desk, it's gonna know it's you. It's gonna say, please enter your PIN. That's gonna be the same as your extension. And then you're going to go through a tutorial with it where it's going to help you put in your name put in your greeting, and it's going to help you pick a brand new pin. Uh, it won't let you do simple pins like one, two, three, four, or the extension number again. So before you sit down and start uh, setting up your voicemail, make sure that you kind of know what you're gonna say in your greeting and know what you want your pin to be, okay? And until you put your voicemail uh, in, you won't be in the directory. 
uh, for if it's someone calls in and accesses the company directory because there won't be any kind of a voice in there. All right. This is your settings key. This is where all the settings on the phone are, you know, how to dim the display or change certain things. Earlier, when we were talking about the buttons, we had talked about forwarding. This is, we, we needed a button, I, I was explaining, to turn it on and off when I want to forward my phone to an outside or an in, internal destination. This is unlike twinning, for, this is not twinning. Uh, you may decide as you're designing your phone system that you want a feature called twinning, which allows your desk phone and your cell phone to ring at the same time. And usually we'll put a button on there to allow that to ring at the same time or not allow it uh, because you know you don't necessarily want to be sitting at your desk and having both devices ring all the time. Um, but in this case, when you forward, it's a hard forward. It's wherever I forward it to, it goes to whatever that destination is and never goes to my own voicemail. Um, so these are what it looks like when you go into settings. I'm going to talk about these few here that are most important. Um, there's more information that's within the guide uh, about some of the features here. A lot of this stuff you'll never touch. It's more settings like IP settings and the health of the phone and that sort of thing. But I'm going to highlight the ones that I think are more important for the user to use. Um, so the first one here is call forward. Call forward is the ability to forward your phone to another destination. This is used a lot of time with organizations that uh, someone has left the organization, but they have direct dial numbers ringing to their phone. So I wanna repurpose those numbers to someone else internally or to the operator so they can handle them so people aren't ending up in voicemail boxes and never uh, tended to. Um, this is, can also be forwarded to like a cell phone or another uh, location during off hours or something. Uh, so you can see where it would come into use or not come into use. But you'll go ahead and highlight using the navigation key. You scroll over to call forward uh, and then you select it and it'll bring you here. And always means that anytime anyone dials your phone, it'll always go to wherever your destination is. So in this area here, you can put in an extension number or you can put in a phone number, nine area code phone number. And then once it's set up and you save it, then you'll use the button that you created on the front of your phone to turn it on and off, okay? Um, there are some conditional forwarding you can do. I'm not gonna go too deep into this, but you can see that I can do when I'm only busy, have it go somewhere else. So if I was expecting um, the air conditioning repair guy to come out to my house and I was on a call, I could set up a forwarding which forwards to my cell phone if someone externally calls my desk phone. So you can make choices or you can choose all, you know, or I could just do it when I don't answer. So it could give my phone a chance to ring and then forward. But I won't get too deep into that, but you could put in the phone number to do different things and uh, kind of more dynamic than just forwarding everything off premise. Um, but look through that in your guide. That's one of the features. Another one is uh, you may want to change the audio. There's two things about the audio here. If I were, if I highlight audio and I use my navigation key and scroll down, I can change the audio path from my speaker to my headset. So if I'm wearing a headset, I could have when I press the headset button on the phone or the speaker headset button on the phone, it immediately answer on my headset. Otherwise, I have to tap that button twice. I'll talk about that when we get to the button. But this is, if you just scroll down, you'll see it says audio path and I can change it from speaker to headset. The other thing I could do is highlight it and hit select. When I do that, it's going to allow me to change my ringer for both internal and external calls that come in to be different rings, if you like, or be a different uh, type of ring. Uh, the rings that are there by default are kind of sing-songy ones, you know, like you would have on a cell phone. So if you don't like that and you want to get to more classic style rings, you can scroll down. The way you'll handle this is you just highlight internal and then scroll over using the navigation key. And then scroll down until it'll play each one until you find the tune you like, then hit save. Then you'll have to go back in and highlight external and scroll over and go down to the one you want for external for it to be different. So both of them are going to be default the exact same. So you'll have to decide how you want that to be. It's, it's nice to be able to change your ringer if you're sitting in an area with a lot of people. That way, when you get used to your ringtones, uh, if you're at the printer, you know when your phone's ringing. So, so that's your ringer. The last one is your display. This is more of my personal, I can't stand that it 
dims so quickly. Um, what this phone has is kind of a display that after five minutes will dim down for energy savings. You know, overnight, you don't need your display all lit up bright because uh, no one's there. So it's like a nice little energy saving thing. So you don't want to eliminate it. But if you're sitting at your desk, you can make an adjustment to that timer. If you don't touch your phone very often um, and you want to make a call, you kind of got to wake it up first by hitting a button first and then going forward. So I always put mine out a little bit. That way, after a while, it definitely will kick in. So that way overnight, not a problem. But I can move it all the way from five minutes to 55. And maybe I think I heard recently you can even put it up higher, like 155 or something uh, a minutes. Uh, but it, this is what the, the, um, the uh, screensaver looks like. It kind of dims really dark by default, so you won't see much. The where it says two, it means you have two missed calls. And it's dims, you can't really see it. So you can adjust that when you uh, select it by going to the brightness uh, level. Uh, that The brightness, uh, the initial brightness that you see where it says level five is how bright your phone is when you're using it. So if it's too bright or too dim, you can adjust that brightness. The screensaver also has a timer. So that's where it dims it down for the screensaver. By default, it's one, so it's very dim. So if you like it to be a little brighter after five minutes, you can adjust that using those two little arrow keys in the gray area. So when you highlight it, use the arrow keys uh, to change the dim the uh, level. For some reason, you don't need to use the navigation key on that. Use those little little keys. So it's a little bit different. But um, you can highlight where it says screensaver timer and move it all the way up to for sure 55 minutes. But you could do is I think now you can do like 120 or 100. And you could play with it a little bit, see how high it'll go. Uh, but you can change the timer on that if you don't want it to screen save so quickly. Just my personal ick, I don't like that. Uh, so I put it in there. Then once you have it set, make sure you hit save. Save is important. The last button on this side is your volume control. Every piece of volume is separate. If you're wearing a headset and you turn on the volume or you answer a phone, you can adjust the headset volume from here. When you're adjusting it, you'll see the little symbol of a headset show up so you know you're hitting the right thing. When you pick up the handset, you're, you can adjust that volume separately. And when you're on speaker, that's separate. Also, when the phone rings, before picking it up, you can adjust the volume for your ringer, make it louder. Um, pretty much everything's right dead in the center, so you have to adjust it up or down if you need it to be different than that. Okay, so that's your volume control. Now let's talk about the other side. Again, um, what I was saying earlier is where that side was all like settings and features and accessing my voicemail, this side is more immediate call handling. Um, we'll start at the top again, work our way down. So the first one is hang up. If you're wearing a headset, uh, this is a good place to go to hang up. You, you did notice probably when we we're up top looking at the display, it does offer like a hang up and release and that kind of stuff. So you could use that key as well, but this is a key that's always gonna be in the same place, which makes it a little easier to manage. So the very top is hang up, where the very bottom would be answer, you know, if you're wearing a headset. If you answer and you're not wearing a headset using that key um, down below, it's basically going to answer on speakerphone. So that's, you may not want that, or maybe you do. So you hit that and you're on speakerphone. Um, hang up would just hang up and you would hear dial tone in your ear if you have your hand set up. So um, that's the difference. Um, next cut button down is redial list. Now you recall from the display that there was a redial number and a button that said redial, but this takes you to the call history outgoing list very quickly so you can pick maybe the second person you wanted to dial. Maybe you called someone three calls ago and you wanted to catch up to them. So when you press that, it takes you to the call history and it takes you immediately to the outgoing list and then you can scroll over the, to the number you want to redial, hit the center of the uh, navigation key or it'll offer you dial on the soft key below. Next key down is hold. It looks like a little pause key. When you press it, your display will show a, the call on hold. It'll be it's not very dynamic the way we're looking at it, but that actual uh, little pause emblem up there next to the number will actually be fluctuating in color. So you're going to know it's on hold. You'll just hit the key that corresponds to the holding call to uh, recover it. Okay. So place it on hold on the button, recover it by hitting the, the line key. 
The next key down is your mute key. It mutes the handset, the speaker, the headset, whatever you're on. Uh, it'll mute it. You can hear them. They can't hear you. It's immediate and it's a toggle. So I hit it again to turn it off. When it's lit next to it, uh, it means it's on and they won't be able to hear you. The next key down is your speaker or headset key. The nice thing is this is a little older display of the phone that I have here. The newer phones that you should have will now have a, a little headset icon next to the speaker key so you'll have a better idea a better idea of how what it's for. Um, so this is, if you're wearing a headset, you would answer your phone, your headset, uh, by tapping this key once if you've changed in the settings the um, the path, the audio path to headset. If not, and maybe you don't want to use that, maybe you want to use the speaker also and sometimes a headset, you can just double tap this button to answer it on your headset. One tap goes to speaker, second tap uh, goes to headset uh, when you don't change the audio path. So it's still usable for the headset, you just have to double tap it. And some people choose to do that because they like still having the option to have their speaker key. Uh, but if you change the audio path to headset, it'll just, when you hit the key, it just goes to headset. Now this is answer only. If I hit this, it's not gonna hang up on them. After I'm done, I have to go all the way up top to that red key that's the hang up key, okay? The last thing I wanna talk to you guys about is the voicemail. Uh, remember again, your default voicemail pin is the same as your extension, but when you go to set up your voicemail, uh, it'll have you set up the pin and now that pin if you have hot desk will be the same they'll match So keep that in mind The last thing I want to show you is something you should be getting uh, at the time of installation Which is a little flow sheet now voicemails vary depending on what you buy um, So but the basic layout and how the voicemail works will be the same for most of you unless you have another person's voicemail not not a my tell voicemail um, so here's a basic flow of how the voicemail works, okay? Um, the boxed area that you'll receive are all the ways you can access your voicemail. I showed you how to do it on your phone. You just hit the button, you'll put in your PIN number, and you're in on a daily basis. You can do that. If you're working from another phone, you would hit the button, and knowing it's not your phone, it'll ask you for a PIN, but you'll just hit star, It'll then you'll enter your mailbox, and then you'll hit star again and hit, hit your um, your passcode or your pin from the outside if you have a direct dial number you can call into your own phone when you hear your voice you can hit star and then enter your pin um, if you're calling in from an auto attendant and you hit star you may have to hit star twice and then enter your uh, mailbox and then hit star and enter your pin so the farther you get away from your phone, the harder it is to get into your voicemail, so to speak. But the boxed area will kind of maneuver you through that. The kind of the uh, voicemail flow area is just showing you the three things you can do when you're in voicemail and everything associated to it. Uh, there's really only three options. You can play messages if you have some. You can create a message to send to somebody. Or you can go into your user options, which would be things like changing your greeting, changing your name, changing your passcode, or going through the tutorial again. <clears throat> so those are the options you really have. Underneath each of those, it gives you kind of the cheats, uh, playing messages. If you ever want to rewind five second increments, you can hit star, it'll rewind. Um, to go forward, you can hit um, uh, the pound key and it'll move forward in five second increments. To pause it for 30 seconds, you can hit one. So there's a few cheats that the system doesn't tell you, but everything else is a non-mystery. Uh, it'll go through every option you have every time you go into your voicemail. So whenever I play a message afterwards, it's gonna offer me, do I wanna play it again? Do I wanna answer the person who called me? Do I wanna give it to another user, which means I send it to somebody else? Do I wanna keep it? Do I wanna discard it? So those options are always gonna be there. And then um, when I create a message, you have two ways to do that. I could do it from my voicemail and not ring the person's phone, or I could just call the person, go to their voicemail and leave a message. In this case, if you're doing it from here, it means you probably know they're in a meeting or you don't wanna bother them or it's just quicker and you're already here. Uh, all you have to do is hit the six key, enter the person's extension number. It'll go beep, you record your message. And at the end, you have a chance to review it, make sure it sounds good. You can delete it and re-record it. You can append it, which means you add to the end of it. Uh, you can also go into messaging options like making things 
confidential, so they can't be forwarded to anyone else. You can request a re uh, return receipt, which will give you an indicator of when they've listened to it. You can mark things as urgent, which moves it to the front of their list and tells them when they get in their voicemail, they have an urgent message. And you can mark things for future deliveries. So there's a lot of things that the voicemail will do, little side things, but for the most part, this is just to help you maneuver through the first few days of starting your voicemail. Um, and this sheet should be asked for if you don't have it already. So hopefully that helps you through uh, the 6920 IP phone. I do want to let you know that I do have other videos if you want to see it. If uh, one of the things we sell uh, usually to our uh, Flex customers, along with the the uh, phone, you would get a MyCollab, which is software that runs on your PC. I do have a full video on the MyCollab. Uh, the most current versions are out there. Uh, so that should help you maneuver through that as well, if you like. Um, otherwise, thank you very much for your time, and I hope you have a great day.